NBA Finals are officially here. Yes! Yes! It's been about a week. I'm very excited for this matchup. I've taken some time to look into the X's and O's. And in this video, we're going to be breaking down all of those aspects. But first off, as an NBA fan, I'm very excited for this NBA Finals. When you look at the two teams that have made it between the Boston Celtics and the Dallas Mavericks, their journey to the finals couldn't be any more different. The Boston Celtics are a team that have been the best team in the league for the entirety of the league. They're a 60 plus win team. They're one of the best net rating teams in NBA history. And specifically, they were 14 games better than the second seed in their conference. They made a bunch of trades, which I touched on in the last video. And ultimately, they are expected to win this series. They are a favorite to win this series. And a lot of that is because of all things I've said. When you look at the Dallas Mavericks, this is a team that is drastically different from Boston in terms of how they were able to make the NBA Finals. Last year, Dallas traded for Kyrie Irving at the trade deadline. They did not make the playoffs to close out their season. They had to tank a lot of games at the end to try to keep their top 10 pick. And it worked. Dallas was able to draft Derek Lively, which based off how the season has gone, he was the best value pick in last year's draft. He's the reason why Dallas made the playoffs in the first place. And his athleticism, rebounding, and explosive finishing near the basket is a perfect match with how Luka and Kyrie want to play. But it doesn't stop there for Dallas. Dallas didn't just make it to the NBA Finals off of drafting a sensational rookie they then built upon that process by making moves at the trade deadline where a lot of people had the Knicks as winners I said Dallas has to be a team that's in that conversation because PJ Watson and Daniel Gafford have been great athletic pieces for them defensively and with their athleticism offensively to make very good contributions I mean PJ Washington by shooting 48% from three in a playoff series is a big part of why they were able to get to the finals as well. So when you look at it, Dallas had to play a lot of tough Western Conference competition. They beat the number one defense in the NBA, absolutely shredded them. They beat the number one seed, Oklahoma City Thunder, who played phenomenally well all season long, but they were a good matchup for them. And now they're in the NBA finals against the best team all regular season in the Boston Celtics. But now it's prediction time. I spent a lot of time thinking about this. I didn't want to answer anyone's questions about who you got gifted. I waited, I looked at the film, and I've come to the conclusion that for me, I'm going to take the Boston Celtics in seven games. Are you dead ass, Ed Bowie? On my great nana's interweb? Now I need to be clear. When I say I'm taking Boston in seven games, a lot of my rationale for that is because of the question marks on Chris S. Przingis. Yes, he was cleared. He's good to play. Tonight, he will be playing in game one. But ultimately, he has not played basketball in pretty much a month now. And coming off of that against a Dallas team that likes to mismatch hunt, that will put him in a lot of actions. And going up against a physical front court as well, I think Przingis is going to have his work cut out ahead of him to get himself back into the right conditioning and to really impact this series at a high level. But I do believe as the series progresses, Porzingis will be a better player, and so will Boston in terms of their variance. The Boston Celtics are a team that have legitimately five to six guys that on a given night can give you very good star-level production. And I think that is really the difference between them and Dallas. Luka Doncic is the best player in the series. Let's not get that wrong. He will absolutely be the best player. But when it comes down to it, it's Luka, Kyrie Irving, the bigs lobs as a joint package for their variants. And then you have DJJ and PJ's contributions as well. Maybe Maxi Kleber can give you some threes. But when you compare that specifically to the Celtics, Chris asked Porzingis with his three-point shooting and how he can get you 20 points in the ball game. That variance is there. When you get to Derek White, a guy who can give you good rebounding games, can give you good shooting games as well. He can make five or six threes in a ball game. That variance is there. When you get to a guy like Drew Holiday, who has been a great downhill threat and can use that skill against Dallas's 
and defenders, but also the passing and the shooting from him in the corners. They just have so many guys who can light you up on a given night, and that's without getting to their two best players. The funny part about everything I just said is that there's a good chance none of it matters. Because at the end of the day, Luka Doncic is a player that can just break your defense. He understands exactly what he wants to do. He's hungry to score. He makes the right plays. And ultimately, I don't think anyone in Boston has the perfect matchup for him. You can say, okay, sure, Jalen Brown is going to start on him. But Luka is going to get them in actions many, many times. And again, his shot making and his reads and the way he's able to quickly get his defender on his hip. He can consistently do that for the series, which is why I have it going seven. I just think the variance of Luka doing that, Kyrie pushing pace in transition is going to be a thing for Boston to adjust to, especially if they keep the coverages the same. Boston was the team that rarely blitzed the ball handlers for the majority of the regular season. Are they going to make a change in this series now that they're playing the best competition that they're going to play the entire playoffs? Or are they going to keep it more of the same and keep in touch with their identity where we just trust our defenders it's going to be what it's going to be? Because normally, the point of playing drop coverage is to take away the three-point line from the other shooters and just force the ball handler into scoring against the drop. But as we've seen, Luka has picked apart drop coverage. Even when he gets blitzed, Luka is able to make the right decision. So for Boston, a team that has a lot of defensive pieces and length, they have the personnel to adjust, but this brings me to the biggest X factor of the entire series. And it's not just Porzingis. It's not just Jason Tatum's play, but it's really Boston's offense as a whole. The reason why people have problems picking Boston, despite how good they were all regular season long, is let's face it. Boston's offense still has moments where you question their process. You question what they're doing well at a consistent level and are they going to be serious that's just what it is boston can get into a mode where they're just taking a lot of threes they aren't really penetrating the basket enough and if those shots are not falling now you have a team in the dallas mavericks who can out rebound you who can win the second chance opportunity stuff but also have two guys who can move the ball quickly in transition with athleticism to score and Kyrie Irving, who's going to push the pace a lot, and Luka, who can throw beautiful throw-ahead lobs and passes. So to me, the biggest X factor is Boston's offense in terms of are they moving the ball? Is the ball getting stagnant? Are they really just trying to mismatch hunt every possession and not get great quality looks? The shot quality for Boston and the paint touches are really what you're looking for. And if the Mavericks are able to slow that down, with what they like to do offensively and they dictate pace a lot better than Boston that is what makes the series such a contested series the issue with the series is as I said the x factor is Boston's offense sure that's one thing but the other x factor for the series is transition defense because again if you're speaking about the Dallas Mavericks if they're able to get out in transition and Kyrie Irving can really run pace and pace them up that's going to be a problem if they're scoring off of the misses from Boston consistently. The good thing with Boston is they have been routinely a pretty good transition defense. I'm pretty sure they were number one in the regular season. So with that effort and that intensity level, you would expect for things to shake th themselves out, which is doable. But that's where Kyrie Irving comes into play because the way that he's able to just craftily move the ball and get out in transition like a blur he is the guy that picks up the pace that gets Dallas running a bit more when they're not running the slow motion Luka ball. And he adds to the versatility of their roster by bringing that skill set. So when you're looking at it between Dallas and Boston, the transition defense can really decide the game because I think both teams have good half court defense. But scoring in other ways, especially with the second chance points, the paint points and transition, those are the extra categories that can really ease a series towards going the Celtics way or the Mavericks way. As far as game one is concerned tonight, I have the Dallas Mavericks. I think Dallas is going to come in and steal a game off of the Boston Celtics. A lot of it is tied towards Porzingis' availability, his first game in a month being tasked with 
his role defensively and even offensively how he'll be looking i'm not sure how strong that's going to be to start again i do think he'll be better but if you're dallas this is the game you really want to steal early on to really set the tone from an emotional standpoint and then also this is going to be the weakest porzingis game at at least in my opinion, before Boston makes their adjustments. So getting a quick steal in on the road is humongous. And I do think that this Dallas team, in terms of Luka and Kyrie, are going to be better crunch time decision makers than the Dallas Mavericks offensively. I do expect that. However, while Dallas does have the better decision maker and crunch time players to me for the series, I do think the other thing that's going underrated with Boston is is defensively in the crunch time they've had a very good defense where they've gotten stops they've been able to get good looks off of those stops and they've converted because of that so in my opinion again this is a series that can go either one of two ways i do believe it's a pick em series i just think the longer the series goes it favors boston because of the variance that they have that's my personal opinion of the series and we'll see what happens but we will be watching the game live on gold blooded it's on playback.tv check in um the link is in the comments below and i will be breaking down film of this series uh the days after the games are done so tap in there again those links will be in the description box below but yeah let me know who you got i'm very excited for this series we got nba basketball remember appreciate basketball because pretty soon we're gonna have a whole off season where there is no basketball for two to three months so yeah peace <laughs>